Last year, I made a video on a lesser known animated Justice League movie. That video did awful, so I'm just gonna do it again. The movie in question is called Justice League, The New Frontier, and it's all about the JLA in a very distinct time period, and it tells some heroes' origins like Green Lanterns and Martian Manhunters while the world is on the brink of war. The setting in this is everything. It takes place during the late 50s and early 60s, or in just broader terms, war times, and it drives the film. It's such a unique time that we really haven't seen in animated DC form before. And I'll be the first to admit that this film is actually a lot less plot focused, which is a lot of people gripes with this movie. It doesn't have much of a normal plot, but it is very heavily character driven, especially in the first half. I'm just going to rattle off some character motivations here. Batman wants to brood and stop cults. Martian Manhunter just wants to go home. And Hal Jordan simply just wants to be a test pilot. But then he has a run in with a purple guy with the jewelry instead. These primary motivations are not that good in my eyes. They're not the heart of these characters, but they do push our heroes, they do keep them as active protagonists, and throughout the film, their goals do morph to become less self-centered. The characters. I'm personally a sucker for good characters, so that's probably why I like this movie so much. Upon my first watch, it surprised me that the main character of this movie wasn't Batman, or The Flash, or even Superman. It's Hal Jordan. Yes, Hal Jordan, not Green Lantern. He doesn't get his powers till halfway through the film and doesn't use them until much, much later. Very ballsy move, DC. This really averted my expectation and gave us all an interesting view on the events of this film. A lot of people think I'm a coward because of what happened in the war. Did your ring tell you about that? You are no coward, Hal Jordan, to you. All life is precious, and this ring is far too powerful to fall into the hands of someone who doesn't understand that. Now moving on from Hal Jordan to Batman. Bruce literally goes through a visually noticeable arc, and it's heartwarming in the way that this movie makes him realize that children are actually afraid of him due to his 1939 costume. And due to this little kid being scared of him, later on in the film he's wearing a brand new costume, one more like the one he wore in the 60s. And it's in this fun little scene where it shows him hanging out with Robin and telling him to do his homework and it basically shows that Batman has decided to be less scary of a vigilante. And while looking into clips for this video I found out that other people actually noticed this and started talking about it about a year ago. And now, for the last character I want to talk about, Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter didn't want to come to Earth. Who would? He was immediately turned off by all the war and genocide going on right now. He seemed confused with all the hatred in human beings' hearts. So he hatched a plan to leave Earth, but when that ultimately fails, he decides he'll try and help unify the human race. Come on. Level with me. Very well. I have looked into your mind, and by extension, your heart. You honestly believe that there will be a better day when all of this won't be necessary. To find that within you, Mr. Faraday, has filled my heart with hope. And it's not just the big superheroes who get really nice character moments. I'm happy to say that a lot of the human characters genuinely surprise me. The non-powered soldiers, scientists, and workers. There are some genuinely great character moments for the everyman, which really helps flesh out this story and the world in only an hour and 15 minutes. The actual plot of the movie. The plot of this movie is, how should I put this, comic booky. It's technically about a giant creature called the center, controlling people's mind and destroying aircrafts. But more importantly, it's about America during a desperate time and the world coming together as a whole in order to face a larger threat than itself. And that's a beautiful thing. Originally, this movie was supposed to be a two-parter and a lot of the actual plot got cut. And that's just a shame because I would have really liked to see a fully realized version of this film. Now that I finally sat down and rewatched this film after a decade, 
I find that The New Frontier is one of the most overlooked superhero movies of all time. Overall, what this movie lacks in plot, it more than makes up with in character development and charm. I give this film a 7 out of 10. It's a very solid movie and I definitely recommend you check it out.